This is a video demonstrating the uh, how to use ORCAD Capture to simulate an 8-bit ALU. So here is the topmost block and hierarchical blocks were used for this for this project. So this is the topmost block. You can see you have the uh, the two number inputs and then we have the selector input here and then this is the output and we have just the voltage supply here and stepping into this you have the operations block and the multiplexer block and the way the operations block works is it takes the two number inputs and performs 8-bit logical operations and we have 10 operations here. We have an AND, a NAND, an OR, a NOR, an XOR, XNOR, not A, not B, ADD, and SUBTRACT. And those are all performed in parallel. Uh, so they're all performed at the same time. And then the output of each is sent to multiplexer, which then decides which, based off of the selector input, which um, operation to out output. So stepping into the operation block here, we have all the individual blocks, and you can see the, uh, the inputs are all wired up in parallel. And stepping into the first AND block here, you can see the 8-bit design, where there's 8 1-bit uh, eight AND blocks, and they each take 1 bit of A and 1 bit of B, and perform the logical operation and then there's the output and the output is sent to a bus which gets sent to the multiplexer and so the NAND, OR, NOR, XOR, and XNOR are all set up the same way the NOT A and NOT B uh, they only take one input because you really don't need the B terms or the B bits when you are performing a knot, bitwise knot on A, and vice versa. So stepping into that, uh, you can see that it's just, again, just eight one-bit knots. And then the add and subtract are the same way, except they take an extra input as the carry in, and you can see the add carry in is low, and so this is the and or the, the add, excuse me. And the subtract is a little bit different because the subtractor is configured as a controlled adder subtractor kind of thing, where the C in is high and C in is set to sent to one input of eight XOR gates. And the reason for this is because if you hold one input of an XOR gate high, it'll act as an inverter. And in this in this case, um, we're, we are effectively finding the two's complement of B. We have, because to find the two's complement of a number, you invert, one method is to invert each bit and then add one. And so the XORs are acting as an inverter, and then... CN, the initial CN gets added to B. And so you have the inversion with the XOR and then you add one with CN. And the reason we need to find the twos complement is because adding the twos complement of one number to another number, in this case adding the twos complement of B to A, is the same in binary as subtracting B from A. And so each of these logic uh, logic blocks are implemented on the transistor level with a NAND gate. And so the AND, where is that? And AND is simply an inverted NAND. And so you can see here, 
we just have the normal NAND. And then on, after that, the output is inverted using another AND, excuse me, another NAND configured as an inverter. And the OR is a little more complicated. You have to invert each input separately and then send those to a NAND. And that performs the NOR, or the, excuse me, the OR operation. And then if you wanted to perform the NOR operation, you would take and put another NAND gate configured as an inverter on the output of that, as demonstrated here. There's a fourth NAND gate acting as an inverter. And so the XOR is even more complicated. Um, it's got four gates, four NAND gates, um, and basically the way this works is the first three gates um, if both A and B are high, it inverts the, the inputs, it inverts A and B. Excuse me, if both A and B are low, it inverts A and B. Um, but in any other case, these three will just pass A and B. Um, effectively, if, they're, if A is 1 and B is 0, then this output will be 0 and this output will be 1 and, and the opposite is true. If B is 1 and A is 0, this output will be 1 and this output will be 0. Um, but as far as the, the this NAND gate is concerned, that's kind of the same thing. Um, and so what happens is these two, uh, these two outputs right here will either be a 1 and a 0, a 0 and a 1, or two ones. And the resulting output of this NAND gate will either be a zero if both the outputs are the same, or a one if both the outputs are different, which is the exclusive OR. And the exclusive NOR, similar to the OR in NOR gates, is just an inverted exclusive OR. Now the NAND NAND logic was chosen to make the schematic capture layout easier because using the hierarchical blocks, there you go, using the hierarchical blocks, only one transistor level schematic needed to be made. So it kind of made that part easier. And so here's the transistor level schematic. And you can see it's just a standard transistor NAND gate, you have two P-type P MOSFETs on top, and then you have two N-type MOSFETs on bottom. Um, these, these buffers and flow resistors here, and the inverters here, um, they're not essential to the function of the circuit. They're only there to separate the digital portion from the analog portion, so in the the output window you can like anything before these two buffers anything after these inverters the output window will show them in as, as digital waveforms as digital outputs instead of as analog outputs which is for digital designs is much more confusing um, and so if you put a trace voltage trace or current trace or whatever anywhere here you'll get an analog output in the, the output window. But if you put a trace anywhere before here or after here, you'll get a digital output in the, the output window, which is, again, just to, center, just to make the, the output easier to decipher. And so the way the NAND gate itself works, if A and B are both low, then both of these transistors will be off and both of these transistors will be on, meaning this node here will be 5 volts, which is logic high. If A and B, uh, if A is 1 and B is 0, or if A is 0 and B is 1, then 
only one of these transistors will be on and only one of these transistors will be on. Meaning, again, this the output is 5 volts and is logic high. If both of these inputs are 1s, then both, the, both of these transistors are on and both of these transistors are off, meaning this output is low. And so, going over to the multiplexer, the way the multiplexer works is you, it's effectively 10 par uh, let me see, eight parallel multiplexers that each take one bit of each of the um, operation block outputs, and then depending on the selector input, will output certain operations. So for example, if you wanted to output, say, the OR function, that would be a selector input of 3, I believe. 0, 0, 0, 1. Yeah. Uh, no, that'd be a selector of 2. My bad. So that'd be the D2 term. And so each of these multiplexers would be outputting the D2 term. So this first multiplexer outputs the least significant bit of OR. This one outputs the next most significant bit. This one outputs the next most significant bit of OR, and so on and so forth until you get to this last multiplexer, which outputs the most significant bit of OR. And these are all sent in parallel to a bus, uh, the output bus. And so stepping into one of the multiplexers, you can see the NAND implementation of it. First, you have the selector inputs up here, and you have the uninverted output and the inverted output. And then one, either the inverted or non-inverted outputs of each of the selectors are sent to four inputs of the five input NAND, while the data input is sent to the fifth input. And so there's ten five input NANDs here, uh, one for each data input. And so depending on the, um, the selector input, one of these NANDs will be turned on, sort of acting as a buffer, and will be outputting the, the data term, while the others will all just output zeros. And all of those outputs are sent to a 10 input OR. And I mislabeled it. Uh, I initially had it as a 10 input NAND. It's supposed to be a 10 input OR. And so it just it effectively combines all the inputs so that the selected so you have one output from the 10 inputs, though the um, nine of these will be zeros, as I mentioned before, and then one of them will be the data input. So if that's a one, then it's a one ordered with nine zeros, which is gonna be one. If it's a zero, it's just 10 zeros ordered together, which is gonna be a zero. So stepping into the 10 input or, it's just cascaded NAND, or cascaded OR gates implemented with NAND blocks as you can see here. And stepping into one of the five input NANDs, it's again just cascaded NAND. Or cascaded ANDs. Um, and then the last, last output is inverted. Uh, and so the simulation output for, unfortunately, for this circuit, um, the data file for the transient simulation is 7.2 gigabytes, and it took about two hours to simulate. Um, so I don't have, I can't simulate it in within this video, and I don't have the, uh, the data file because I created this and simulated it on a different computer. But I do have... A picture which I will pull up for you of the output file. There it is. And so the A input is selected to be three in hex, and all of these these outputs are in, in hexadecimal. And the B input is selected to be A in hex, and you can see the selector 
goes from 0 to 1 to 2 all the way to 9. And the output 3 anded with A is 2. And the next output is NAND. Then this third one is OR, then NOR, XOR, XNOR, not A, not B, add, subtract.